Hey guys, Andrew, welcome back. So you're listening to Enabling Lives Conversations Around the NDIS. So guys, as I wrapped up recording the podcast, I do actually record both the YouTube and the podcast in batches as well. I saw a really interesting post on a local community Facebook page saying, is there something that a support worker can take clients to to socialise? And I thought, particularly in regional, rural and remote areas, this is a huge issue. So you would have heard about the third space, not about the fourth dimension or the third dimension, the third space. So the third space is the sign that somewhere that it's not work or school, it is not home, but it's somewhere that someone can go to socialise. So for people without a disability, that might be, or even with a disability, guides, scouts or volunteering. But if they have a disability where it might interfere with the way that they interact with the world, with the way they behave, so it might be sensory issues, the threat of sensory overload, the threat of overcrowding, the threat of fatigue, even the threat of falls. These all need to be considered. And guys, the other thing is cost of living is going up. So going out for coffee and cake does cost a support worker and client money. So the first and most obvious one is a day centre. I do know day centres are not going to suit everyone. Let's be real. Then I know some more progressive agencies are having what they call community centres. So they basically are set up like a college rec area where you can come in at your own time, do your own thing, but there is board games set up, there might be study areas, there might be a movie going, and they might also have then structured activities as well. But the one thing that I'm finding with day centres is they generally do age out at around 40 to 50, unless you're already in the system for intake. And we need to remember that disabilities don't just leave when we age out. Um, then your other one, if it's one-on-one, if that person can only tolerate with being one person, is don't discount your local library. And your local library Um, I know ours has like a Lego club, it has a chess club, it has study areas, it also has access to things online as well. I know that our local council does like change programs, so they do some local exercise in the park as well. Um, Then depending on how they identify gender-wise and present gender-wise as well, Check out your groups that might be a little bit of course, but are quite rewarding, so volunteering. So that might be scouts, guides, boards brigade, girls brigade. It might be at the local church or soup kitchen as well. And that also gives them a sense of belonging and community and worth as well. It might also be your local op shop in sorting clothing, in cutting clothing up for rags. If they're able to money handling and customer service skills because that then gets something on their resumes as well and don't discount packing a cut lunch and going and sitting in a park or a garden or if you're an independent support worker start thinking about your own groups so that could be going and checking out the local community organisation centre, like your local community centre. That might be checking what's happening in volunteering at your local church. I know some of the local churches do what they call coffee and cards, so that's playing card games, board games. Um, They put on tea and coffee and do a lunch afterwards as well. So these are all low-cost community access things. But the other thing I think support workers forget is, especially with higher functioning clients as well, is their capability to work or to run their own business. And I know that I've talked about 
the lower barriers to entry for internet content creation, but it is an oversaturated market, especially with the cost of living. I've been doing this for three years and I still don't have any Patreons. I haven't unlocked YouTube monetization at all. I'm hoping to unlock ads on the podcast as well. Um, having guests on, they do either need to have something to promote or be reconciled for their time as well. So that can be an interesting one to get around as well. And let's face it, guys, disability is not a sexy topic to talk about. Disability is a challenging topic to talk about. Um, it is not a topic that people want to acknowledge as well. And guys, that's a really interesting one of having to wrestle in Australia pre royal commission and post-Royal Commission, wrestling where people with disabilities, their support workers, caregivers, family, friends, and general relationships do fit into society. Um, I know there's a push to end the segregation and seclusion, but we do need safe spaces to go to socialise that aren't aimed at the lowest common denominator that don't insult people's intelligence but help them to be the best person that they can be. That might be helping a person to make a cup of tea even though you know if you made it for them it would be so much more efficient but it's not disenabling their lives it's enabling them to be able to do things for themselves and that enabling is different to learnt dependence where all of us have some level of learnt dependence in our lives because society doesn't exist in a vacuum and guys this is the other thing that consider and I do know that after the optic outage we're all trying to find things that are offline to do and so but consider online communities as well um so things like places like discord twitch youtube comment sections um as well are all really great places you, you can start to find like-minded people as well and especially on Discord, Twitch and Tumblr, you might find meetup groups that do cosplay, that do craft, that do sewing, that go down to the local comic cons as well. And guys, if you're an independent support worker or even with an agency, depending on the cost factor, there's nothing stopping you guys from organising trips. I know cost and insurance may be an issue to things like Comic-Con, Supernova, other conventions, day trips to the beach, the local zoo, and even, I know, the local library and our local supermarket do, like, educational trips where you follow a, particularly the supermarkets, you follow a truck around and you see the bakery, you see um, the butchers, you see how that chain that warehousing chain works as well and then you can also get into your more um, particularly in a day center environment your structured life skills as well so that might be cooking cleaning maths science technology as well and it all depends on what your interests are as well so guys this has been a really interesting one for me because I am higher socioeconomic. I obviously work by myself and I have to be very intentional about my social life. And people with a disability are at higher risk of social isolation due to not being able to simply access things and festivals that are on in the local community as well. So, guys, this is where um, I know a lot of international disabled creators have talked about accessibility should be from the start as well. 
so for music festivals having accessible toilets having accessible showers having day passes as well so guys they're the other things to look into is what festivals and galleries that are on so checking out what's online your local facebook page your local reddit page i know in america craigslist often has things like that and there's nothing stopping you from grabbing a cup of coffee from the local 7-eleven or convenience store or even to go from a cafe and going for a drive somewhere and guys the other thing is facilitating that client to make friends especially if they have a psychosocial disability so that is a disability that affects the way that they interact with the world and perceive the world so that can be things like autism adhd a brain injury it might even be epilepsy it might be a general intellectual disability so these things do affect their thinking their perception their fatigue levels and so you guys have to be responsible for managing that one as well and that's where managing it can be really really important as well and so guys there's nothing stopping you guys from doing these things except insurance time and money and if you're an independent worker you have more freedom to work with that client and their family and friends to push them to achieve their goals so once those basic activities of daily living so dressing bathing cleaning budgeting cooking are done and oftentimes that's where a support worker will start literally building those basic foundations of living so the person can live independently as well and the support worker if the person has the physical capacity to do it you generally will be as a client expected to meet that support worker in the middle so learnt dependence guys i'm just going to touch on it's generally when someone who is physically capable of doing something for themselves so that might be cooking cleaning ironing doing some laundry sweeping getting themselves organized making a phone call because they have access to support will leave that all for the support worker to do because their attitude is they're paid to do it and in some cases the support worker may need to be a support worker pa housekeeper for that person but that then steps over into the role of caregiving and support workers can give care but if you're able to do it for themselves their role is to mainly to prompt and remind you to do these things as well and so prompting that person might look like reminders on the fridge reminders of how to make a sandwich reminders how to make a cup of coffee reminders to lock up to check whether they've got their wallet purse keys and phone it might be them wearing a sunflower lanyard for hidden disabilities so if they get lost overwhelmed someone will come up and offer them help i have found wearing the sunflower lanyard in public has been a huge learning curve for me i at the supermarket are very much an aldi shopper and so i've noticed that the aldi cashiers will actually slow down for us and i've also seen ironically that one of the large supermarket chains in the uk is actually getting rid of their self-serve checkouts because of what they call shrinkage shrinking is the polite term for shop theft um so shoplifting and so guys I see that a lot of people will be quite happy because that's where you can get in, get the entry level jobs as well. So guys, let's start the conversation around free and low cost things for people to do with a disability. And guys, the other thing is don't discount inclusive sports teams as well and more gentle sports. I know in Toowoomba we have a croquet club 
I know that we have 10 pin bowling, but also things like that you wouldn't consider that are a sport. Things like a chess club as well. I know that our local library does reading groups. And guys, as I've said before, there's nothing stopping you from helping your client to set up things like this as well. So setting up a local reading club, setting up a gardening club or a produce swap group. I know I am stepping back from my local produce swap group because of some internal politics with that one as well. There um, also the Red Cross, check in with your local pharmacy. Often the Red Cross does hiking groups. There might be a wildlife carers group where you might be tree planting. So the best advice I can offer the support workers who follow me here and over on YouTube and over on the blog is to get creative, jump online, look on the local paper um, to find things that you can do that are low and no cost as well. And guys, the other very simple one, but I don't recommend this one, but coming up to Christmas is window shopping for Christmas presents. I don't recommend that one because that's an easy way out for some support workers just wandering around the shopping centre as well, where support, particularly in Australia, is around goal setting as well. And so for someone with a psychosocial disability, that goal setting might be managing relationships being more social but how do you do that more social for some people that might be needing to have a structured environment as well where they can be themselves but also understanding the rules that society plays by and so this guys I am going to do a podcast and a YouTube on it of the need for disability friendly spaces and disability exclusive spaces as well because disability doesn't just affect the person who's dealing with that disability. It affects their friends, their family, their relationships. And if someone has never been taught about good touch and bad touch, then that leads to how can they be taught about consent and informed consent and being able to sign for things as well. And I know some people you may never be able to teach them that, but some people, when you bring that conversation up, will really, really respond to it well. So guys, I will stop there. And guys, you've been listening to Enabling Lives, conversations around the NDIS. And guys, I know guests are a bit thin on the ground at the moment. Um, that is because in Australia, it is summer. We are going into school holiday and celebration season and the silly season as well. And guys, it is a bit hard when you're asking guests to come on for free as well so guys if you're a support worker or support agency located in Toowoomba and you want to talk about your journey to NDIS and how you're dealing with the recommendations from the Royal Commission guys feel free to get in touch with me my contact details are always over on the blog and guys you can find me at over on YouTube at Annie in Wonderland how to experience the NDIS, um, same with over on Blogger, or if you want to email me at any, or lowercase by the way, A-N-N-I-E dot N-U-N-N 1234 at gmail.com for comments, suggestions, ideas, feedback, and you guys might even find your feedback listed on the podcast. And guys, if you've got comments, questions, I will do my best to research and answer them, guys, as well. So, guys, thank you so much for listening. And, guys, I'll 
see you over on the YouTube as well.